All right, everybody. Well, here we are in VCarve Pro. Let's get ready to build the job and start to make our uh, VCarve Pro custom camp welcome sign. Okie doke. Here we go. We're going to go in and we're going to create a new file. Dimensionally, I've already got it set. Now, mind you, I know not everybody has a, a, a large machine, but again, this is going to work. All you're going to need to do is dimensionally change things to fit the size of your spoiler board, okay? Now, the guys with the bigger machines, obviously, no problem at all. All right. We're going to base the job out of a width of 46 by 34. We're going to be doing this out of 1.5 inch KD pine, as I do most of my signs. I start my Z axis off of my top of my material, and my XY datum starting position is always in the center. Unit of measurement is inches. All right. We click OK. Now, for the sake of this tutorial, I love elliptical signs. I like ovals, so we're going to run with that. But again, this tutorial is going to be applicable to any exterior that you choose. Square, round, oval. Maybe you want to do a rectangle with uh, radius corners, whether they're internal or external. But for the sake of this, again, we're going to be doing this uh, with an elliptical. I'm going to get him in. And we're going to close them. I basically went to create vectors, draw an eclipse. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to click him on it, click on him again, excuse me, and I'm going to get him to the center through the alignment tool, and we're going to get him aligned. Now, under transform objects, I'm going to also go to set selected object size. I'm going to make sure that my link X and Y is not checked. And I've got my dimensions written down for this particular project. I want them to be, I want the, uh, the outmost dimension to be 42 inches wide by 28.0 inches high. We're going to click apply. And there, we have a nice, uh, we have a nice elliptical uh, oval here for the start of our sign. Now, what I'm also going to do is because I want a nice one and a half inch border on this, I will look at my outer dimensions again. I'm going to reduce this by three inches, and I'm going to reduce this by three inches. So this will be 25 by 39. All right. Well, let's highlight this again. Let's right click. Let's copy. Let's right click again. Let's paste. All right. Now we're going to take this innermost one that we just built, and we're going to bring it down to 39.0, and we're going to go by 25.0, and we're going to apply it. What we basically have is a nice decorative one and a half inch rim. Now you can you can change this up to however wide you want. Uh, and actually, now that I think of it, let's go an extra inch. So we'll give it a two inch border all the way around, and we'll make it look nice and beefy. So we'll go 38 point 24 point, we'll click apply. Now we've got a nice two inch border all the way around this, great. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put another elliptical in the middle because what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a nice, nice focal point to this. And we're also gonna, uh, coincidentally, we're gonna use something out of our free openclipart.org library that is free for all of you to use and to download from. All right, let's draw another elliptical. I'm not quite sure how big I want to go. We're kind of flying by the seat of our pants with this. So let's look at this. Transform objects. Align selected selected objects, excuse me. Pull that into the middle. Great. We're going to close them. We're going to go back to transform objects. And we're going to set selected object size. Now, we have a lot of area around here. <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to take this and I'm going to go 15 point and let's say my height will be, uh, we'll go 8 on this center focal piece and we're going to click apply. Uh, let's go a little bit, little bit taller on our height. Alright, there we go. Our center focal piece, we're 15 wide, 
or 10 inches high. We're going to close this out. Now, we need to decide on what we want to what we want to have this say. So why don't we start out with Welcome to the camp. Welcome to the camp. Welcome to the cabin. Uh, actually, yeah. We'll do cabin. Let's apply it. See how it looks. And I don't know why I keep getting a, a double hit on the letter W. Okay. Let's apply that. All right. We will go with Lucida Calligraphy. Uh, it's what I use in a lot of my... Uh, my stuff, my own shop sign, but by all means, please pick whatever font you like that you find would be most befitting for you or your situation or your client situation, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me, and we're going to center. Our text height will be three inches. We'll apply. We'll close it. Now, we need to get this to wrap. Now, in order for it to wrap, we have got to edit our curve. Now, we can either pull them down, which that certainly is not what we want, or in this case, we can pull him up, which is what we do want. We can bring him down. Now again, we can notice that we have a bunch of space. I can see that my W is barely touching what would be my x-axis line, but yet my n, my letter n, is over my x-axis line. So let's shrink this up a little bit. With your left mouse button, let's give it a couple clicks, give it a couple clicks, give it a couple clicks. I still didn't close it up as much as I would like, so we'll give it three. And remember, wherever you, uh, you click, just kind of keep, uh, keep it all the same. A little bit better. There we go. Now, when we get ready to cut this out, we're also going to give you a couple different options. We have three inch, we have a three inch text on this, so we have more than enough, more than enough area uh, for this to, to be easily visible. Uh, then on the bottom, we could do a name if we wanted. And of course, we'll use, we'll go with the Smiths. <laughs> Again, I'm going to bold it. We're going to center it, and our text height will be three inches. Now, feel free again to even change the text height. These are just, uh, this is just a quick turn project for us. That's all. Okay, we're going to highlight him while we are in selection mode. Let's pull him down. Now again, we'll come over here to create vectors. We're going to edit text spacing and curve. And let's do just that. Let's pull him down. We can move him back up. Align selected objects. Make sure he's highlighted, and we're going to center him on our y-axis. All right, great. Welcome to the cabin, the Smiths. Now we want our centerpiece. We want this nice focal centerpiece. Because of where I live here in New Hampshire, uh, we have we have moose running around. We have big old Bullwinkle. My God, I, I love I love moose. Everything about him. It's like a gigantic horse with horns. We're going to go into the openclipart.org, free downloadable library, and we're going to pull in Mr. Moose. And that is the wrong moose. Alrighty. Let's try this again. Hey, we got it right this time. I want to look at the size of him. And he is basically almost 12 inches tall. Well, let's see what happens when we pull them down to 7.5 and we click apply. However, we also want to make sure that our link X and Y is clicked because it will readjust him dimensionally. And then let's move him back into the middle of our focal piece. And then we can close this out. 
We can come down to Align Selected Objects and we can center Mr. Moose again. Now, he may have just a wee bit much detail and we have, we have gone through before and I know for a fact that we have shown you how to go in and strip out some of this detail so you're not milling a, a toolpath on top of a toolpath and so on and so forth and okay but what we'll do is we'll, we'll run him and we'll see how he looks real quick alright here is your basic welcome to the cabin sign let's start cutting toolpaths right now we're gonna do our outer border we're gonna do it under a profile toolpath function we're gonna go to a cut depth of 187 we're going to go 3 16 we're going to use a 90 degree v bit uh right off the top of my head i would have to say that my spindle speed and my feed rate's okay and we're going to call this outer border i told you i like to put a, a nice 45 degree bevel around my edges and we want to make sure that we are outside because if we are on the inside, we will cut to the inside of the line, and however deep we go at 187 thousandths, well, we'll lose that on our height here and here. So as long as we mill to the outside, <coughs> we'll never lose <coughs> any of our uh, overall dimensions that we had set in the beginning. All right, let's calculate. There's our first one in. Now, our second one, which is our inner. We have a couple decisions to make here. We can do another bevel if we choose. I would not go as aggressive as our outer bevel. I would probably go uh, 0 0.09. We'll do a 90 thousandths interior bevel. Same V bit. And this time we're going to go inside the line because, again, if we were to go to the outside or directly on it, whatever that V bit takes off, we're going to lose that. And we're going to lose our big two inch thick profile that we have here. And I don't want to do that. All right, so we're going to call this inner bevel. We'll calculate that. Alrighty, let's close this. Now, we do have two options for however it is you choose to mill this. You can do this as a two dimensional engraving, which is as simple as 50 thousandths would be a decent depth. I'm going to use a 60 degree V bit. I'm actually not going to use a flat area clearance tool. I'm going to make sure that my feeds and speeds are adequate. 16,000 RPM, 100 IPM. I can probably go up a little bit on that. For the sake of the video, we'll leave it. And we're going to go uh, wording. And we're going to highlight the top. Hold down your shift key. We'll highlight the bottom. Alrighty. And then we can click calculate. All right, let's close this out. Let's go back. Uncheck him. Now, this is if you choose to go with a two-dimensional engraving. Now, we have this border around the moose. You could do this just fine with a 60-degree. With a we'll go into a profile tool path again. I would only go around this 50 to 60 thousandths though so as not to have it too uh, too deep because we don't want to take the focal point off the moose. I am going to go in, I'm going to use a 60 degree V-bit, quarter inch. All that looks good. And we'll go, I'll do this one right directly on, I will click calculate. Let's close this. Click off the circle. All right, now we're going to go in and we're going to engrave the moose. 
Now the moose I've done this for, uh, depending on his size, he mills out nice between 30 and 60 thousandths, of course, depending upon size. <laughs> the smaller you shrink, big detail down. And the deeper you go, your toolpath functions will run into one another, and the next thing you know, you got a gobbly goop of a mess that you don't want. So, with our 60 degree V bit, let's highlight Mr. Moose. We've got the outer border as well, but just hold down the shift key, click off of that, and we can call this Moose Calculate. Oh my goodness. Uh, it would be nice if I put a depth in. Let's go, uh, let's go 40 thousandths. Click Calculate. Now, I, again, I don't know due to all the detail how well he's going to come out right off the top of my head. Right, we'll close him out. And let's come up to Preview Tool Pass. And we're going to preview all our tool paths, but I want to set them all in black first. Okay, welcome to the cabin. There's our border with our moose. Now, the font could be manipulated a little more. It could be made a little bit bigger. It's three inches. It could be brought down if we chose. We could most certainly Bring the font down like this. We could split the gap between the two if we wanted. Let's close this out. Let's go up to, uh, we're going to be a little lazy right now. We'll go to Tool Pass. We'll recalculate all Tool Pass. Okay. Click off of these. We'll come back up to Preview tool pass. We're going to reset and we're going to preview them all again. Okay, Kapow. What we basically have, less the cutout right now, is we have a fully completed and programmed two dimensional welcome to the cabin. Now I noticed that my letter W here is a little close to the border. So I would most certainly advise to take this and we can let's try to realign it again. And so you see how I do this. We go to align selected objects. We get him centered. So our gaps here aren't too bad. Uh, let's see wording. We'll calculate him again. Let's close him. We'll go back to Preview Tool Pass again. I do this a lot just to make sure that I'm getting exactly what I want. Uh, so that in, in the end, I can get exactly what my client wants. Great. <laughs> I would say that that would be just about a very simple but quick finished uh, kiln dried 1.5 inch pine sign. All right. Now, however, we wanted to render this in a 2.5 where we had all raised letters. We're going to show you how to do that right now. What we're going to do to get our raised letters is let's go back into wording again. We can keep our tool path the same, but I would go with a cut depth a little bit deeper. And let's go, let's go say 90 thousandths. Now, what we're going to do here is to actually perform a 2.5 instead of a 2.0 dimension, hold down your shift key. We have to highlight our inner rim, and we also want to highlight the rim around the moose. And what's going to happen is we're going to mill everything out around the lettering, around all the wording. Our letters will stick up. And the other thing that we're going to use in here will be a, a flat area clearance tool because I don't want to do all the hogging out with a small little teeny v-bit. So let's pick on a sign this big, let's go with a half inch. 12,100. Uh, depending on your material and your machine, I know that I can, I can most certainly crank these numbers up on mine. But for the sake of the example, 
you know your machine better than I do, so you're going to have to adjust your spindle speed and your feed rate to what's most comfortable to your piece of equipment. If you've got a spindle, well then by God you can probably go a lot faster than me. All right, and what we'll do here, we'll click calculate again. Now, we can see all the lines. This is where this half inch bit will go in and it will hog everything out. We go back with a 60 degree V bit to do the V carve function and it will clean up all the lettering. Okay, let's reset our preview and let's preview all our tool paths again. Alrighty, what you're seeing, everything in black is what was cut out to the 90,000. You may even want to change your depth. Now what will be standing out? Your outer bevel, all your lettering, your moose will look as though it's on an island in the middle. This is going to be uh, elevated. Your moose is going to be engraved at a two-dimensional, but everything else will be 2.5. Again, we simply achieve that by holding down the shift key, and we highlighted our inner, both of our inners. All right, last and least, we've got to cut our job out. All righty, well, what we're going to do is we're going to go up to Toolpath, Toolpath Operations, Profile Toolpath. All righty, I, I know that my material thickness, excuse me, is 1.5 inches. I'm going to go 10, maybe 15 thousandths beyond 20 tops, all right? I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill. I am going to slow this down. I will go at each pass depth of a quarter of an inch, but I'm going to slow my tool down to 60 IPM for two reasons. One, if in the event I put in a, a bit that's a little bit dull, I could burn that outer edge and I've got to sand the bejeepers out of it. Or two, if I run it too fast, I'm going to heat the bit up and I may snap it. So we're going to slow it down a little bit, cut a little bit deeper. Alrighty, that looks good. The other thing that we have to keep in mind is that we put a bevel around the outer edge. And we went to a depth with a 90 degree V bit of 187 thousandths or 3 sixteenths of an inch. So we need to make sure that our show advanced toolpath options is clicked. What that does when you click on that is down in your machine vectors, it opens up another little box and it's an allowance offset. We went in 187 thousandths deep for our bevel, so we're going to offset this 190 thousandths. Three one thousandths aren't going to, to matter. What that will do is it will cut to the outside of the center of that V-bit, if that makes any sense. Where your V-bit goes down to the dead center, your end mill will cut just to the outside of it, so your bevel is left intact and it's not damaged. We're going to add tabs. Okay, let's edit our tabs. Oh goodness, well it would probably help if I clicked on the outer border. Alrighty. We'll edit our tabs. I have 10 preset, uh, which that looks perfectly fine. We'll close it, and let's call this cutout. Alright, and then we're going to calculate. Yes, it is telling us that our material is 1.5 and it is actually going to go 1.56 and it will cut through and into our machine bed. That's why we have a replaced spoiler board on top of our factory. Alrighty, we click OK. Great. Basically, everything is milled. Let's reset our preview and we're going to preview it one last time. Outer bevel, inner. This is for the 2.5 if you recall earlier. If you do not highlight your uh, your inners, then all you will end up doing is getting a two-dimensional. But that is it. That is it cut out. If we put it on its side here, we can see that uh, we have, in fact, gone through. We can see a little tab. It's kind of hard to uh, kind of hard to get them exact, but that's pretty much it. You have a basic but yet very attractive welcome to the cabin sign again change your font obviously the clients last name or your name or your design in the middle 
and we'll uh, we'll make certainly uh, sure that we include links again to the offsite cloud where you can go in and get any of these images that we have in there for free use for all of you okay well I hope this has helped you as always folks if there are ever any any questions please do not hesitate to shoot us an email steve at little little woodshop.com and when it comes down to the animals please feel free to help yourself in the library go in put whatever you you'd like it here if you don't like the moose maybe you'd like a bear maybe a little chipmunk uh, we've got a big old fat chubby raccoon we got the buck jumping over the log feel free to play with this size though and as you've seen in like the uh, the fireplace mantle scene I think as part of that tutorial we showed you how to go in and take out some of the super super high detail out of the uh, the animals when you shrink them down so that your your milling tool pass don't run into one another and the next thing you you end up with a big mess okay well folks as always thank you for your support thank you for following and subscribing I hope this uh, this tutorial helped you and again if ever there's any questions, please shoot us an email, steve at littlelittlewoodshop.com, or you can catch us on all the funny pages, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, so on and so forth. All right, take care, everybody. Have a great week. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.